Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at how Zinedine Zidane would set up Manchester United. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you are new and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. First up, Zinedine Zidane learned his management trade under Carlo Ancelotti, a descendant of Arrigo Sacchi's management tree, pressing in a zonal 4-4-2. Zidane is a legendary manager and player and would instantly grab the respect of all the Manchester United players who would follow him through his tactics and commands. Control is the best way to describe his style of play. Tactically flexible between a 4-3-3, a 4-5-1, a 4-4-2 diamond, basically to counter the opposition's style and threats. His main setup at Real Madrid was a 4-3-3, built on a solid defensive midfielder, two playmaking central midfielders to control the tempo, attacking fullbacks that create the width out wide, and three strikers or three forwards in Ronaldo, Benzema and Gareth Bale. He'd switch to a 4-5-1 to counter in the second half or away in Champions League games, with Asensio and Vasquez used out wide, moving Ronaldo to a striker. They'd press centrally with Modric and Cruz and look to win the ball high up the pitch. In the second Champions League win, he went with a 4-4-2 diamond to counter the 4-4-2 that was very popular that season. This allowed Isco or Tony Cruz to break the opponent's press, playing in between the lines and allowing Ronaldo to play as a striker. In his third Champions League win, again, Zidane tweaked his formation, played a bit of a 4-4-2 from time to time, with Modric excelling in central midfield, but also reverted to the 4 3-3 in the final again three Champions Leagues in a row what a manager what a man but let's move on to how he would set up Manchester United well first up let's go with the 4-3-3 first up in goal David De Gea the best goalkeeper in the world imagine him playing behind a solid defence but also a midfield that controls the tempo of a game a little bit better than United have done over recent years the big thing though with Zinedine Zidane is he keeps David De Gea at Manchester United for life let's move on to the fullbacks of course Marcelo was the man for Zinedine Zidane at Real Madrid. Arguably played as a left winger, creating in the final third was their outlet in the final third. So if you look to cross, play one twos, but one of the best fullbacks I have seen in my life. Marcelo and Carvajal for Zinedine Zidane transformed the shape when they were in possession from that 4-3-3 to arguably a 2-3-2-3. With those two players playing as wingers in the final third, but Marcelo being the playmaker. He was directly involved in six goals in seven Champions League knockout games last season and became Real Madrid's key guy in that final third. So skillful, so good on the ball, and maybe... Manchester United maybe switch it round under Zinedine Zidane with Diogo Delo playing as the Marcelo attacking wingback. We all know Diogo Delo can be a complete wingback like Marcelo. Tactically, very, very good. Technically, fantastic. And there's some things that Marcelo does that Delo does. You know, for example, spotting the space inside, but also spotting it on the overlap. Diogo's crossing is fantastic, similar to Marcelo. Under the tutelage of Zidane, Carvajal and Marcelo became the best fullbacks in the world and expect Diogo Delo to take himself forward. And he's got the potential to do that in the 2-3-2-3 in possession. So let's move on to left fullback. The dream under Zinedine Zidane, of course, would be Marcelo. But he's more likely to move to Juventus to join his pal Ronaldo in Turin. So United again, we mentioned De is going to be a bit more attacking at right back. Having more of a cover defender on that left hand side, Luke Shaw could be absolutely perfect. That's how Carvajal and Marcelo work together. Marcelo would be the more attacking fullback. Carvajal would still provide the width in the final third, would be a little bit more reserved. And that's the role that Luke Shaw could take. Only Matic and Paul Pogba have completed more passes than Luke Shaw for Manchester United this season. And Shaw's improvement over the last six months could be accelerated under Zinedine Zidane and could make the difference from time to time in the final third. Let's move on to centre-back, a key position under Zinedine Zidane. Again, the two centre-halves that he used at Real Madrid, Sergio Ramos and Rafa Varane, became the best in their position because they were really good at covering the wide areas. The full-backs have become so important in the final third that the centre-backs need to be comfortable at defending those areas. Both Ramos, Varane, quick, powerful and good in those areas. So United need to enter the market and then a signing that Zinedine Zidane could make would be Mateus De Ligt from Ajax. De Ligt, a really good defender, named as 2018's golden boy, the first defender ever to win the award. The guy has the ability on the ball, the technique to find the passes in between the lines, fantastic on the cover, it's strong, and the fella is only 19 years old. You could see the same transition for De Ligt as Rafa Varane, that under Zinedine Zidane was a very talented centre-half, but became probably the best in the world under the Frenchman. Became perfect at reading the game, covering the situations on the fullback to pushed on, something that De Ligt could do very well. We've seen him do it for Ajax, their shape does transition 
Uh, it does leave the two centre-halves with a player in between them and a player ahead and a bit of a diamond shape, but they have to cover the flanks. Something Delit would be comfortable with and we perfect for Zinedine Zidane's Manchester United. Let's move on to the other centre-back. It could be Lindelof, it could be Bayi. I probably think Zidane will stick to Bayi over Lindelof. Bayi's a little bit more physical in terms of tackles and interceptions this season. He's made more than any other Manchester United player. 3.1 tackles and 2.4 interceptions. We all know what he can do when he's given a run of games. He's physical, he's good on the ball, and we're a perfect partner to Matthias De Litt. So let's move on to Zinedine Zidane's midfield. A real key part of his midfield was Casemiro, vital to how they attacked and provided the balance. If he wasn't there, Zinedine Zidane's midfield would have been so open. Zidane had Makaleli in his playing career to cover him in defensive midfield, and he used Casemiro in a similar position during his spell at Real Madrid. His role evolved, that he started off as just a pure destroyer, but then he started to play higher at the pitch. When teams would man mark Tony Cruz and Luka Modric, sometimes you'd find Casemiro in the attacking midfield position, a wonderful footballer who started getting his goals and assists under Zinedine Zidane, but it was that passing option to move ahead of the two central midfielders that used to break teams down. You know, for example, Atletico Madrid's press, they press high up against Real Madrid's two central midfielders. Casemiro would wander in, become the passing option, and break the press. But of course, where he makes his money is winning the ball back. Under Zinedine Zidane in the Champions League, he made 74 interceptions more than any other midfielder, and won the most tackles, 135 tackles. One of the big things, though, was covering out wide again. You know, if the centre-half had gone over to deal with, you know, the balls into the channels that Real Madrid had to deal with on a frequent basis, considering the move of the full-backs. Really good to see him come over. Casemiro would come over and double up. One of Casemiro's greatest performances in the Champions League came against Bayern Munich. Completely stopped. I am Robin doing his classic move, cutting inside. Casemiro was like a brick wall that game and would be a brick wall for Manchester United. But again, would cost a lot of money. Alternatives in the Premier League could be Wilfred and Didi. That averages 5.5 tackles and 1.9 interceptions per game for Leicester City. And could be ideal if United don't have the money, they could go for a younger um, Casemiro in Wilfred and Didi that could sit in front of Manchester United's defence. Let's move into midfield, and arguably Zinedine Zidane's controller was Tony Cruz, who pick up this position at left half in a lovely little pocket of space and distribute the play. Of course, United aren't going to sign Tony Cruz, but a guy that Zinedine Zidane could pick up from Ajax with De Ligt would be Frankie de Jong. Frankie de Jong is a modern-day sweeper, likes to drop in between the centre-halves and drive forward into midfield, either penetrating the opponent by carrying the ball and beating people in the dribble or drawing players in and then releasing a pass or simply playing forward. Frankie de Jong could be the perfect guy for Manchester United to play in between the lines. You know, play into a position where the team don't want to press you as soon as they press you opens up space for attackers ahead. In terms of the Eredivisie this season, no player attempted more short passes per game than of course Frankie de Jong. Of course, what I mentioned before, he can also dribble since joining Ajax. De Jong has averaged 2.3 dribbles per game with a completion rate of 87%. Can play as a number six, can play as a number eight, and that's why it'd be perfect to play the Tony Cruz role at Manchester United for Zinedine Zidane. Last season, De Jong played as a central midfielder, where he'd play for Zidane, of course, and got seven assists in 22 games. Pretty good return. And you could link him together with Paul Pogba, who could play a little bit higher up the pitch, similar to how Luka Modric played for Zidane's rail. Again, Modric was a little bit more of a aggressive player and would link with the final third, especially with Gareth Bale in the first two seasons. With Pogba getting him further up the pitch, getting away from that playmaking area where sometimes he makes the wrong decisions could be fantastic. De Jong being that guy that's dropping to get on the ball, Pogba providing the outlet in the final third. Of course, he's got the range, he can pass, he can tackle, he can shoot, he can score. And I think the biggest thing is that he'll respect Zinedine Zidane and he, of the instructions that Zidane has in the game. Pogba will take that on and do that on the pitch. But Paul Pogba could really explode under the Frenchman and could even use Paul Pogba in a similar position that he played in his playing days. Pogba in central midfield with Frankie de Jong and, of course, Wilfred and Didi. Let's move on to the front three. First up on that right-hand side, United have been crying out for a right winger. Leon Bailey is the guy. Stylistically, like Gareth Bale, very quick, a powerful left foot, loves to cut in and fire shots at goal but also combined that pace and power, got nine goals and six assists in the Bundesliga last season. Could also play on the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side if Zidane wants to switch his wingers. The big thing with Bailey, though, is he has that confidence, that spark that United lack sometimes when breaking teams down. Similar to Bale at Real Madrid, had that sort of ability to carry the game. 
You know, you take the wonder goal that he scored in the Champions League final. Something that Bailey could be capable of. He scored a wonderful back heel inside the penalty area for Bayer Leverkusen last season. A moment of inspiration. So he's got those moments cutting in from the right-hand side, also in the penalty area. Good close control, can play on the left-hand side. He's got a good left foot, strikes across the keeper, like Bale did for Tottenham. Seems like the perfect guy to get Zinedine Zidane's Man United going forward. Three forwards. Leon Bailey being the first one. The interesting one would be in the middle. Of course, Zizou loved Karim Benzema as a centre forward, a player that linked the play, played as a false nine, was unselfish, assisted more of Ronaldo's goals than any other player under Zinedine Zidane. But the biggest thing for Anthony Martial, he could play this role, he's got a very good touch, can bring players into play, and his link up with Paul Pogba, moving from central midfield into that attacking area, could be fantastic, and would be given the freedom. He's a pure goal scorer as well, a bit of a poacher, so when he gets those chances, he can put them away, but can link the play like Karen Benzema did so well. The big thing with Zinedine Zidane's Real Madrid is Arguably, they looked like a forward three with the central guy dropping in, which allowed the two players on the wide side, Ronaldo and Bale, to get into goal-scoring positions. You could take Leon Bailey on the right-hand side, flying in to score goals as Anthony Martial drops in. On the left-hand side, of course, it's going to be Marcus Rashford. In terms of goals and assists in club football at the age of 21, Rashford's numbers are quite similar to Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Of course, Rashford scoring more goals than Ronaldo and grabbing more assists than Messi. Incredible start to his career and I expect him to continue that improvement. In terms of what Zinedine Zidane could add to Marcus Rashford's game, maybe it's that clinicalness in the final third, taking his chances when he needs to. You think of both Ronaldo and Bale improve their goal scoring in the penalty area and the management of Zidane was perfect. But that movement again, Martial dropping in, Rashford and Leon Bailey getting into the penalty area would provide three strikers for Manchester United with the control in midfield equals a lot of goals. The interesting side as well though, Zinedine Zidane does like those hard-working midfielders. So you're looking at players like Jess Lingard and Chong could come off the bench and drop United back to a basically a 4-5-1, leaving Martial up front on his own. And uh, you know the central press as we mentioned before with Frankie De Jong and Pogba, that counter-attacking situation. Zidane did dominate the possession but he also like to break. Of course, there is a 4-4-2 variant as well. Uh, Isco was used at the tip of a diamond in that second Champions League win. Could be maybe someone like an Angel Gomez could come in and provide that option in between the lines. Another young, exciting Manchester United youngster. But also Zinedine Zidane could play a 4-4-2. Very tactically flexible. One of the best things about the Frenchman as a coach is he can switch between multiple systems in multiple games. The 4-4-2 for Manchester United would be exciting. Lingard and Chong on the flanks, Pogba and De Jong in the middle, and Rashford and Martial as a two-man pairing up front. Or you're throwing in Romelu Lukaku to pair with either Martial or Marcus Rashford. Then you potentially could put Martial back into midfield on the left-hand side. What a team that would be. Lots of goals. So it's Zinedine Zidane's teams were renowned for over in Spain. Goals and a lot of fun. So just to summarise what Zinedine Zidane did at Real Madrid and could do at United is he installed Casemiro at defensive midfield. He managed Ronaldo to win back-to-back -back Ballon d'Ors, tactically evolved from a 4-3-3 to a 4-4-2 diamond, back to a 4-3-3, and he had a 7 percent win rate, lifted the Champions League on three occasions and of course won a trophy every 97 days and could bring the glory days back to Manchester United. I've been Statman Dave, make sure of course to subscribe if you are new and get in the comments. Would you like to see Zinedine Zidane at Manchester United as manager? We have dived into the hypothetical once again but get into the comments and join the debate. Could bring the glory, and could bring, and could bring the glory days back to Manchester United. I've been and could bring the glory days back to Manchester United. I've been sta If you enjoyed this content, why not see how Pochettino would set up Manchester United? Or alternatively, if you want to look into Manchester United's youth prospect, Tieth Chong, go and check that video out as well.